What up nerds, it's Jason here from Custom Cans and uh, again it's been a while, I've been super busy over Christmas making stuff but now I'm back to experimenting with stuff. As you can see I'm wearing the glasses because I'm going to try and do clever stuff today and that's, you need the glasses. Anyway, <laughs> um, so as you know a while ago we got these uh, Hi-Fi Man Sundara clothes backs and uh, super impressed, there's certain things that are really really good about them like they've got super clean base and stuff. Uh, the, the only thing that I didn't like is that the mids were too far forwards, they're a little bit shouty that kind of thing. I've seen a couple of other people say the same. It's, it's down to personal preference. Some people absolutely love these. Other people are like, ah, oh, a little bit shouty. And what I wanted to do was basically uh, understand the things that they've done to this to tune the sound, why they've done it, and then see if there's anything that I can do to retune it. So this is just like the first part where I did a little bit of experimenting, finding out what's, uh, what, what the ideas behind their stuff was, because because uh, if, if you haven't watched the previous video where we pulled them apart, there's some really interesting stuff going on inside there and I wasn't 100% certain what it did. So what I'm hoping to do is basically we'll take some measurements on the measurement rig and then we'll rip out some of the stuff that's in there, take another measurement, see what that was doing. And that way we can find out uh, the problems that they were solving. I've never tuned a pair of closed back planar magnetic headphones and when people have asked, I've said no, I can't, I, I can't do it, I don't know what I'm doing. And so this is a good chance for me to learn, see see what it's all about, because uh, as far as I can tell, Hi-Fi Man have had a bit of a nightmare doing these, it looks like a lot of work went into it, uh, it wasn't just a case of sticking a bit of wood on the back. Um, yes, so what I should do is take a measurement first. Now then, we're using the Mini DSP ears, and as someone will no doubt point out, they're not great, but it's fine for what we're doing. I'm just doing A, B comparison, so I'm going to take a measurement, I'm going to take another measurement, see which frequencies have changed to see what's going on. We'll also have a look at maybe the distortion, see if it's increased or changed the distortion at all that's in there. So let's take a, an initial measurement. It's always the way, there's a car that goes past just as you try and take a measurement. Let's just try and take one more, see if I can get a cleaner one. Okay, so that's our basic one. As you can see, you've got a bit of a peak around 300 hertz, which I suspect is what's making them sound a bit shouty. And then you've also got some around sort of 1K, you've got a bit of a hump. Um, but as you can see, the base is super flat uh, all the way down, which is good. You've actually got a little hump so in the base, which is uh, like in the Harman curve. But yeah, there's there's some stuff going on which isn't, isn't ideal in the middle. But I suspect it was much worse than that when they first started, because otherwise, uh, yeah, they wouldn't have put that much effort into them. So which one's left? Ooh, oh. <laughs> Watch out, there's little washers in those hinges. Ah, oh, just remembered they're a nightmare to get back in. Uh, oh, let me, uh, just, sorry, just before I forget, I um, don't know if you remember, a little while ago we were working on the Hi-Fi Man HE400 SE and I completely redesigned the ear cups to improve the airflow, that kind of stuff, and increase the sound stage with some uh, fancy tech on the inside, I don't know. So we've got all these lumps and stuff around here that help give it a slightly wider sound stage in our experiments, but I'm a bit close to the subject. So I decided uh, once I was happy with them, I was going to send them off to a few reviewers. And uh, first on my list was Wave Theory, this guy. Uh, now he's, he, as far as I can tell, he's a golden eared listener. He seems to know what he's talking about. He's very good at describing the sound, much better than me. I'm rubbish at that kind of thing. And uh, I just told him to be brutally honest, tell me what's wrong, what I can improve, because that helps things more usually and uh, overall he seemed pretty happy there was a couple of things like the comfort on the headband uh, so that could be more comfortable and possibly uh, tone down the mids a little bit I'm unhappy with that and also it means that um, I'm, I'm gonna get in contact with Hi-Fi Man see if we can get their slightly fancier headbands and offer that as an option on these going forwards um, yeah so yeah, it's just really interesting I've not got anything reviewed by someone else before and you should definitely check out his stuff he's a good guy it's a good guy. Um, anyway, links in the what's it, and uh, back on with the with the other Hi-Fi Man stuff. Cool, 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 cool. Okie pokey. Let's see what we can do. So, I'm just going to remove the pads. Let's put that out of the way. Get this under the camera. Let's get a little mouse mat out so we don't scratch them up because they're quite nice. Uh, what have I done with my screwdrivers? Let's check. All right, so if you didn't watch the previous video, um, as you can see under here, we have this big piece of kind of foam around the outside absorbing some of the sound and inside, I don't know if you can see it in there, but you've got like another piece of 
felt type material with a star cut in it and all of that is glued on so it's going to be a bit of a bit of a nightmare to get off but it'll be interesting to see if we can get it open but first of all we've got to open these up Ugh, it's going to be a bit of backwards and forwards while we uh, open it up and test it but you'll probably enjoy watching these being pulled apart when i pull the material off because it looks like a scary job and it might all go wrong and you know there's nothing better than seeing someone destroy something on video <laughs> Uh, let's see. I'm hoping it won't go wrong. <laughs> hoping I can remove all this without causing any damage. I might have to go and get some IPA, some uh, isopropyl alcohol, to help remove some of the sticky stuff, which is sticking that foam to the driver. So a good number of screws around the outside, holding it all together. Um, if I remember correctly, this. Oh, do I need to take the socket? I don't need to take the socket out. So inside you've got the driver. Again, if you haven't looked, uh, if you haven't looked at the previous ones. We've got normal magnets here, and then you've got neo magnets in the centre, where you've got that opening, giving it a little bit more torque in the centre. And then um, the diaphragm, as you can see, it's not a round driver; it's an oval driver turned that way. So, yeah, it's a different design from their other stuff. So, I uh, just need to remove these screws holding this together. And these have got cute little bolts and nuts. I should say machine screws because they're not, they don't have a, a shoulder. Um, yeah, oh, the cutest little tiny weeny nuts on there. That's a couple of mil across. Such a weird decision. Um, not sure why they've got little tiny weeny nuts. <laughs> it's very cute. I would have thought ones this small are more expensive because they can't be standard, you know, they can't be made in as high a number as slightly larger ones. But maybe just the smaller material. I suppose it's going to make the thing slightly lighter. But, uh, it's just a bit weird. So we've got four screws holding the driver to the, uh, the, the baffle or whatever that bit at the front is. And one more. Um, and as I mentioned in the previous video, what they've done is quite clever. They've used the, the nuts they've used, these little nuts, aren't magnetic. So they're made of like brass or copper or something. I think they're brass. Uh, so it doesn't get sucked into the magnets when they're assembling them. So if you look, drop a little nut, it doesn't disappear off into the driver and get stuck to one of the magnets, which is uh, cool. Makes my job a bit safer. All right, so let's see if we can get that off. Okay, so. So this is held on with some kind of double-sided sticky tape. But it looks like it should come away. With a bit of persuasion. Ooh, oh, this is nice. Well, you know, you always ruin one. <laughs> <laughs> if you own a pair of these, I do not recommend doing this. <laughs> this is just uh satisfy my curiosity. Okay, so that's mostly removed. So on there you can see the star cut in that. That's held on with double sided tape. Unfortunately some of that has stayed on the on there. <laughs> But yeah, it is quite interesting that most of this driver was kind of blocked off. And I suspect that's how they've um, made it sound okay in a closed what's it, but we will see. I'm just fascinated to see what this does. Um, they've obviously spent a lot of time testing different shapes and stuff, otherwise you wouldn't necessarily come up with a star pattern like that. Different shapes and sizes will affect the sound. Okay, right, so we've got that. Let's put this back together, do another test. Right, okay, so basically I've removed this, uh, it's, it's nappy, which was stuck on. And now we're going to take another measurement and just kind of do a little compare, see what that, see what that's changed, see why they stuck that on there. Mmm, interesting. So, as you can see, Without that, you get quite a big roll off in the base, starting from about 50 hertz, which is interesting. You have lost that peak in the mid range, and you have kind of sorted out the the upper mids as well a little bit, and then the actual high end drops down a bit. So yeah, so you've um, kind of flattened off the mid range a bit but lost a lot of bass and again the, the mids and highs are still a little bit up and downy. Uh, so that's quite interesting. Um, I'm just going to have a look at the distortion as well, just see uh, 
compare those. Distortion. Yeah, so yeah, you've got a lot of just without that on, you've got a lot of distortion in the bass as well. So I suspect you've got a lot. Of, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know. The theory behind pl closed back planers is still a mystery to me. I need to experiment <laughs> further to figure it out. I don't know. But yeah, so loads less distortion with this jobby and it sorts out the bass. So that is definitely <laughs> put that in for a good reason. And uh, well done, you know, it's not just for show, it's, uh, it's doing something. But now I need to have a look and see if there's an alternative thing that I could maybe do. I'm going to try a couple of other things and see if I can change anything else. Basically, I'd really like those to just kind of lose that, that mid-forwardsness that they've got that weird little jobby in the middle. So that was really interesting. Obviously, uh, they wouldn't have put in all that work if that stuff on the front of the driver didn't do something. And yes, removing it made it a lot worse. But it was really interesting seeing what it did. Uh, yeah, so you lost a lot of bass and uh, didn't. And the, yeah, it was all kinds of all kinds of messed up without that in. So that that's why they put all that time and effort in because it must have sounded awful when they first tried it. Um, but what was very interesting, uh, ex I, I, I experimented with putting lots of different kinds of foam on the front and that does a really good job. Um, there's not a lot more to be gained. What I think might be interesting is uh, moving the hole further forwards so that the sound is a bit further forward so it might improve sound staging, that kind of thing. But that'll be something to experiment with later. I'll have to order in a similar kind of um, felt that they've used there and then I can laser cut the same kind of star shape because the, the, the size of that hole really affects it and obviously that's been tuned quite well already so maybe just moving the hole forwards a bit but it's quite a big job I'm gonna have to order some stuff in make a laser cut template just try that out and it might might not do anything also from a commercial point of view uh, if we were to sell DIY kits no one wants to be pulling that off the front that's quite an in-depth piece of modding and not the kind of thing that I think most people should be doing uh, so yeah so attacking the front of the driver I'll probably leave it it's fine as it is I wouldn't worry but inside the ear cup they've gone for this, which is like just a little black square of foam. I don't know why they went with a square. Obviously, it's uh, more convenient if you're cutting. You can cut squares, cutting circles and, and custom shapes is more expensive and waste more material. But it's more of a kind of token gesture. So I wondered if changing the damping material would sort things out. And surprisingly, it went better than expected. I tried a few different densities of foam and sizes and a bit of medium density foam i think this is 12 mil thick medium density foam really sorted things out quite a lot so just a circle of foam that is probably a few pence can really improve things so let's let's take a look at the graphs so as you can see here uh so here we go so this graph goes all the way from zero hertz to 20 what, 30 kilohertz to 20 from, from zero hertz to 20 kilohertz uh, just to kind of see what's going on below the the audible bit of bass because uh, sometimes with harmonics and things sorting out that low end can also improve things a little bit I found I don't know it might just be me but um adding the circle of medium density foam as you can see it stays f really flat all the way from 300 hertz right down to 10 hertz which is really good it's sorted out that weird little dip and a peak about 300 hertz uh, you've also, yeah, it basically stays a bit flatter right up until you get to about 2k. And it's also got rid of a dip, a weird dip that you had at sort of 7.5k, filled that in at the top end. Um, yeah, so I, with all of these things, you've got to have a good listen. Like this just gives you broad strokes looking at the frequency response. Just, you know, you have a listen, you say, oh, there's something wrong. You look at the frequency thing, you go, oh, that's what's wrong. You tweak some stuff, then you have to have a listen again because uh, it doesn't doesn't show the whole picture on there. And sometimes you can get a graph that looks nicer, but the whole thing doesn't sound quite as cohesive or nice. Uh, let's also look at the distortion while we is there. Uh, so stock distortion there and modded distortion. So the, the distortion hasn't changed much, you know. I've, I've 
but it's got rid of that weird little peak that it had around 300 hertz. So, peak and a dip. Yeah, so having a dip and then a peak really kind of accentuates the peak a bit more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this up on the laser cutter, laser cut it the right kind of shape, and then I'm gonna do a bit more experimenting, see if, if we can get it even better, uh, just with some subtle tweaks. But yeah, definitely, definitely uh, some medium, den a larger piece of medium density foam, a lot thicker. So this is only probably three mil thick, this one's about 12 seems to have sorted it out but then i went for a, a higher density foam so this is a, a high density foam and you lost all of the extra base extension on this so where we've got this so with this one it went down to sort of 10 hertz flat with that one it dropped off the same as it did with this but again you smoothed out the mid range so i'm going to have a listen to both of these i'm going to try some different i'm going to get some laser cut shapes the right size try a few different ones have a listen because that's what it's about. It's just these take really long to pull apart and stuff. So I'm not going to do it now. I think this is going to going to leave it with me for a couple of weeks to try a few different things and just to kind of refine it down. But I think there is definitely some improvement to be made easily and cheaply, which is uh, which is what we want. You know, if we can make a little kit that costs less than a tenner, that you stick in these and you sort out the mid range, <laughs> jobs are good. So, and I'm I'm pretty certain that's possible now after these experiments. I think I just need to. Finesse it just a little bit, and uh, and yeah, we should have should have something available for them. Yeah, so I found that really interesting. It was it was uh, it was bugging me. I just wanted to know what that all that tuning that they'd done, what it did. So it was really interesting to rip that out, do some tests, and go, oh yeah, yeah, it was for a good reason. Um, but if you found this kind of thing interesting, let me know in the comments, and uh, hopefully in a couple of weeks I'll do another update. I'll finish off this kit, and uh, I will make something that we can uh, that we can then list on the website. Uh, that should be pretty easy for anyone to fix. If we're attacking the back of the driver, it's really easy. You've just got to remove the eight screws, put whatever it is inside, close it back up. Should be a pretty pretty easy job for 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 the DIYer. And also, you know, if you do so, if you've got some medium density foam knocking around the disc, like it'll look a bit fancier. We'll do a laser cut fancy fancy jobby but you know it's the kind of thing that you can you can do so yeah it's been super awesome hanging out be great you know if you, if you enjoy this kind of thing hit like and subscribe you know you know how it is anyway i'm gonna shoot off i'm working on some other stuff look i'm making like a gundam style hd25 ear cut Ooh, sexy <laughs> gotta love a mecca <laughs> Anyway, yeah, it's been super awesome hanging out, and uh, yeah, it'd be great if you enjoyed this, if you could like and subscribe, because it gives us a little bit more motivation to get on with this, this kind of thing. But anyway, I'm going to leave that for a minute, because I'm fed up of pulling those apart and get back to doing this, which is like a, a Gundam-style HC25 ear cup I'm designing. It's a bit, a bit more design flair involved, a bit, a bit more fun. Uh, yeah, but that, that's going to be pretty cool when it's done, especially if we stick lasers and stuff in it. Anyway, cool, 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 cool. Peace out, one love, uh, Jason out. Loving your work.